So it seems that we've got some pretty extensive details as to the Warhammer 40k price increases already. Let's talk about what's gone up and by how much, and the rather silly document which Games Workshop just uploaded, getting loads of their own prices wrong. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where yesterday we talked about Games Workshop's planned increase in Warhammer 40k prices. They often put up prices around about March each year. Last year was a fairly extensive one, and it looks like this year is going to be the same. They cite inflation costs as the main cause, which admittedly has been running about 9% in the UK. I was guessing that we probably wouldn't know full details as to the price increase until a fair bit nearer the time, but it looks like they have actually published a document on their website saying how much is going up and by what. Just before doing so, Games Workshop seem to want to scare their US customers as well by publishing a document that shows that they have ridiculously massive price increases before taking it down and giving them a new one. So in summary, Games Workshop's announcement yesterday was that Warhammer prices are going to be going up in general by around about 6%. The main things that are affected are plastic and resin miniatures, most spray cans and paint brushes, but not affected are starter sets, paint pots, rule books and other hobby supplies. They're all staying the same. Obviously the reaction to this thing really isn't great. General consensus tends to be that Warhammer models are fairly expensive for what they are already, and Games Workshop is currently making massive profits. They didn't really need to do this if they didn't want to. Obviously Games Workshop being Games Workshop will price the models based on what people are prepared to pay. They want to maximise their massive profits. Though admittedly this price rise maybe looks like a bit of a middle ground, it's not quite as big as inflation is. It means that theoretically the money that they will have coming in will actually be a bit reduced respectively. But obviously, seeing as wages aren't keeping up with inflation, it means that to individual hobbyists, it still represents a bitter pill to swallow. That was yesterday's news, but today Games Workshop have published updated price lists for their stockists. It looks like we've just got the documents for the USA and Canada at the moment. Looks like we might have to wait a bit longer for pound sterling and euro prices. Still though, I think that these are really quite helpful for getting a general gist of the changes and roughly what's going up and by how much. Perhaps the single most interesting and silly thing that they did though earlier today was that they published a document for the USA and it had an entire list of price changes for them and they were absolutely ridiculous. In their article they said that things were going up by about 6% but this USA document had a lot of things going up by 20% including the vast majority of the Warhammer 40k model range and lots of things that they said they wouldn't touch including starter sets and paints. That was up for the vast majority of the day, you might have seen it posted a bit around the internet already. It was indeed a legitimate document and I was going to make a full video on it, but fortunately they managed to update it just before I was about to record. We now have a USA price list document that's frankly a lot more sane and a lot more in line with what we were expecting. It is kind of a bit interesting and concerning to think about where that document must have come from. At some point they must have been drafting putting up prices by around about 20% in the USA. So fortunately it looks like those price increases didn't come to pass. The USA is already overcharged for Warhammer prices quite a bit compared with a lot of countries. If they'd gone up higher than other places then it really would have made the disparity ridiculous. In any case let's take a look at some of the common Warhammer things and the price points that they've moved to. First up perhaps one of their flagship products the Combat Patrol set. They've gone up by around about what they said 6% Canadian and 7% US dollars. They're now going to cost you around about $190 Canadian or $160 US dollars. Broadly speaking, compared with the rest of the changes, this does indeed seem to be around about the average that Games Workshop is going for. Good to see that these aren't going up in excess or anything. Though depending on the exact kits they have inside them and whether or not they changed much, they might represent a little bit better or worse value compared with the models separately. Next up, we've got a common price point for their characters. I do feel that Games Workshop generally charge quite a lot for their characters for the amount of plastic that you get, but these are the old versus new prices for things like the Death Guard Lord of Virulence, the Leagues of Botan Karl, or the Space Marine Captain in Gravis Armour. Comparatively, they haven't come off too badly in terms of price ratios, $48 to $50 Canadian, or $38 to $40 US, a little bit lower than the average that they've gone up. Next up, for a few common Horde or Light Infantry kits, here we have things like Neophyte Hybrids, Adeptus Mechanicus Skitari, or these new and twisted Chaos Space Marine Accursed Cultists. They perhaps come off a little bit worse compared with some. The Canadian prices are $60 to $65, about an 8% increase, where the US prices have taken a bit more of a jump all the way up to $55, so that's plus 10% from 50 it is kind of interesting that it doesn't seem to have affected literally everything. I noticed there the Cadian Shock Troops that were priced at that previous price point, but they seem to have stayed just the same. 
Maybe not the worst news if you're collecting guard, I guess. Next up, we've got a fairly common price point for Games Workshop's bigger squads. Things like a squad of Space Marine Intercessors or Battle Sisters of the Adeptus Sororitas. It's also the same price for things like some of the bigger models and bikers of other factions. Things like three Adeptus Custodius Virtus Praetors, three Cerberus Raiders of the Admeg, or three Scorpec Destroyers from Necrons. This one does appear to have been a bit variable. The Cadian prices have gone up 7%, up to $75 from 70 though the USA has got away with this one quite lightly. They're completely unchanged compared with before. Games Workshop did confirm this for the UK as well, saying that the Battle Sister squad would go up from £36 to £37.50. That's around about 4%, so maybe a bit better than average. I guess we don't know exactly how much things are going up in the UK though. We don't know whether it's going to be comparable to overseas or not. It does look like a few other choices just completely escape price rises, whether it's the USA or Canada. Things like Chaos Space Marine Havocs, Space Marine Outriders or Assault Intercessors, they all stay the same. I guess one common theme between those lot is they appear in some value sets. Not sure if that's got anything to do with it. Moving up to bigger stuff, and here's some vehicle sets. This one's a medium-sized tank sort of range of price. Sisters Immolators, the Admech Onager Dune Crawler, or Scorpius Disintegrator, the new Demon Prince, and the squad of Tower Crisis suits. In Canada, this has jumped up from $95 to $100, and in the USA, it stayed the same at $80. Again, relatively good news there compared with the rest of the range. For bigger vehicles like the Repulsor Executioner, Land Raider Crusader, Battle Wagon, Archaeopter, or the Botan Hecaton Land Fortress, that again is worse in Canada, 130 up to 140, where the USA has got away quite lightly, just going up from 110 to 112. I think some of these jumps just vary based on the standard price points they have for these things, and whether or not they have another one in reasonable reach. Then for some of the bigger single models, we've got Mortarian and Magnus going up to $200 Canadian, or $210 for Questorus Pass and Knight, an increase of $10 there either way. And then for USA, we've got Mortarian and Magnus up $10 to $170, and the Questorus Knight remaining unchanged on $170 themselves. I'd say perhaps some of the single biggest losers from this comparison are the Battle Force boxes. These tend to come and go and aren't usually permanent additions to the range but there do seem to be a few on this list. We've got the Chaos Space Marine Bale Fleet Battle Force and some of the Christmas and Space Marine ones. In Canada, they're going up $20 to 280 and in the USA, again, it's $20 up to 230 In terms of increases, the Battle Force box in the USA is perhaps one of the single most hit pieces. A 10% increase is a decent amount above the 6% that Games Workshop said. This will chip away at their value just a tiny bit compared with buying the boxes separately. Otherwise, going down the price lists, it does appear that codexes, rule books, and data cards are all unchanged, as are the dice, which are already well expensive enough in my opinion. As I mentioned, synthetic paintbrushes are unchanged, and so are all their normal paint pots. In terms of risers though, perhaps some of the biggest hit ones are the other paintbrushes. The non-synthetic ones seem to be rising by around about 20% in both areas. They said that their Citadel tools would largely be staying the same, but it does look like a few of them have gone up, though usually by small amounts, less than 10% and the spray paint seem to have increased by around about 5% in both areas. I guess a little bit worse deals there. Overall, my general takeaway from this is that it does seem at least fairly in line with what Games Workshop had said would happen. In terms of the increases, I'd say it's not the worst differences between the USA and Canada. I'd say arguably the USA might have come out a tiny bit better, due to a few popular kits basically getting the exact same price as they were before, though it's not much in it. I'm kind of glad to see that they didn't go for that massive 20% rise that seemed to be in their draft document that they accidentally published. Price rises in the first place aren't exactly much fun and will put people off, but that would have taken things to a whole extra level. Obviously not great news for the average hobbyist, but at least we've got a fair heads up on what's coming. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments, let me know what you make of these new prices. If you'd like to keep up with Games Workshop's news and releases, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying quite a lot, any support is enormously appreciated on the channel's Patreon page. It's what allows me to keep on making videos like this quite so regularly. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.